why it's so messed up that we're using um, glycophosphates and all these other inorganic fertilizers and spraying things with herbicides and pesticides because we're trying to yield so much for our earth but we're cutting off detrimental parts of the the cycle where it's only sustainable for so long and now we're talking about this episode because it seems like that the soil is and it's ending phases on earth oh i gotta go i've been working told them please don't hit my phone i'm in my zone bro just leave me alone was on the road but i swear i'm coming home now the drinks on me i think we need a toast see i did it for me now my old friends calling told them nothing's for free told me time is money dog i swear i paid all my fees i was starving for this day now my fan they can't eat Hey everyone, welcome to the Cup of News episode here with your hosts, Peter and Matt here. We are two nurses on a mission to change the world. Thank you for choosing us as your audio experience to get the latest health information to current nurse and news. So appreciate that. What motivates us is when you guys smash those five stars, keep downloading the episodes, sharing it with your loved ones if you guys find value in these podcasts. This is what continue to make us climb the charts and keeps on motivating us to keep on producing this high quality content. We're wearing some cool merch, Nurse Gains, Nurse Fit. You can check it out on the Cup of Nurses shop. Good business. Show notes are on the Cup of Nurses.com. If you want to get some merch for Frontline Warriors, we are FrontlineWarriors.com. And we are FrontlineWarriors.shop for the merch. And the last thing is these this app that we're working on, Pronto. We've been in the works for months and months, and it's finally coming to a coming to a wrap. We're excited to finally launch it and get things going there. So prontohealth.com if you want to join the wait list and yeah let the show begin how you doing Pete? i'm doing great man we're both still a little bit under the weather but getting past this, this little funk and i'm i feel like i'm sunburned again we got back from miami a couple weeks ago and now we're back in san diego and we decided to go out to the sun and now we're sunburned but in this episode we're going to talk about soil degradation and human demise soil retrogression and degradation are two aggressive evolutionary processes associated with the loss of equilibrium of stable soil so we were listening to one of GRE's episodes with Sadhguru, and Sadhguru is like this uh, gentleman from India that's on this mission to save our soil. And he has this, this theory that um, is said to be that basically there's about 60 years left of, of uh, agriculture the way we're doing it currently, which is crazy because like we think of these things of like save the climate and everything, all these climate initiatives. And like I haven't really heard about the soil too much. But it's crazy to think about that we're really reliable on soil. If you would have any kind of soil, uh, you're not going to be able to live. As humans, we need water and we need food, right? And the only place you get food from is basically the soil. Animals rely on soil, plants rely on soil. And if we keep de- degrading this soil that we have, we're not heading for for a, uh, a, a good area of, like you could say, the, the human lifespan. Yeah, we are part of the soil. We are one with it. And it's a hard concept to understand because we like to objectify a lot of things in Western society. For example, Earth. Earth is this sphere, and we always feel detached from it, like we're not the Earth itself. Or just like we mentioned soil, we think it's part of Earth, and it's really not part of us, where, you know, the old famous uh, saying that you were born out of ashes and you were turned into ashes. Mm -hmm. Technically, we were once soil, and we were, you know, brought to life, and we will degrade back to soil technically. Mm, crazy concept, man. Yeah. It's yeah. like the snake with uh, eating its tail. It's the mm-hmm. continuous cycle of uh, it's never ending. Yeah. There's no beginning, there's no end. It just is. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. And when you think of like how does soil actually get like destroyed or or what are we actually losing from soil? So there's actually two ways uh, it loses like its function. So one of them is retrogression and that's the natural way that the soil dissipates, you could say. So if you think of like natural disasters, like a river flooding and destroying the topsoil, uh, th- that's one way that the soil could erode over time. Yeah. A second- um, One way I like to think about it too is like the dust bowl. If you have soil that's not being taken care of, not mm-hmm. taken care of, not watered, there's not enough organic matter, it just turns into powder and the wind just blows it away anywhere. Mm-hmm. And you're losing that top layer of soil, which is important to grow crops and and everything else yeah yeah so that's one due to natural uh natural things so second one is the man-made one you could say the one that us humans are responsible for and that's a degradation so that's just a, like the failure to replenish and renew the soil's uh nutrients because soil contains nutrients and it needs nutrients to uh to like be able to do the do, do its function and processes 
So it's like crazy to think about like the way we use soil, the way we're taking advantage of it. Uh, we're making it lose its potency over time. And you're gonna need more of, more of it over time because it's not as nutrient dense and it becomes an issue and issue and just grows into a bigger and bigger bigger deal. Because like you said, that there's there's not, it's like, like we need it to survive, right? Like you're saying, we're like we're, we're one with the soil. So it's like, if you don't take care of it, like it's going to lose nutrients, same way you're gonna take care of yourself. You're gonna wither away and you're gonna be unhealthy. But yeah. it's like something that no one talks about. Right, even like in medicine, you know, we put band-aids on things. Mm-hmm. Well, if our soil is only losing its organic matters and we're not getting we're not yielding as much uh minerals and vitamins from the vegetables because of poor soil Mm. we're putting a band-aid on things when we're fortifying our cereals or orange juice taking vitamins multivitamins and we're really just putting a band-aid on the bigger problem just like you said where it might be 60 years of the soil might not be used to be able to crop anything or yield any crops yeah i'm glad you brought up the, the vitamins because there's a reason, I guess, you could say that why there, there's been an increase in the need of these supplements. Because obviously we're not able to get it through the raw foods that we eat. So who's at fault here, right? Like, do we blame ourselves for not taking more of an initiative? Do we br- blame the agricultural industry for not properly working those, those so, you know, it's like, a, it's like a tough thing because we're all equally responsible. And it's just like, like, like what do you really do? Like from our standpoint, like we're nurses. There's not much we could do, right? So it's just like we kind of put that response in someone else's hands and they're obviously not, not doing a good job of it. Same way, like like I said, we're nurses. Somebody puts nursing care in our hands, so we got to help figure out how to make this person better, right? That's our responsibility. So it's just like it's hard to figure out how to help this this industry without being in this industry. And I like that you brought up that like whole a nursing perspective and a patient perspective because if you think about it as like, as like a wound. I know you mentioned a different example, but imagine like a wound that you had to pack with like a wet to dry dressing. So imagine... The way we're using our soil is basically like changing the gauze outside of, of, of that wound and never taking out that what's dry, dry part, right? That's cool thing about. You know what I'm saying like it's, it might heal, it might fix itself, but it's most likely not. And it's going to, I guess, it's going to keep that wound um, healthy, I guess, for a longer period of time. But eventually it's going to stop because it's going to, to get messed up because you're not changing the actual packing of it. It's one way to think about it. Mm. So like what is soil? The definition of soil is unconsolidated unconsol- mineral or organic material on the immediate surface of the earth that serves as a natural medium for growth of land plants. So soil is one of the most important nutrients as Peter and I discussed. And it's uh, it's more than just feeding us. And like even like thinking about the whole vegan movement and plant-based, if we already have soil that's depleted so much, we want to go more plant-based and we want to not use animals, that seems only more detrimental to... Mm-hmm. Uh, the soil and it's gonna it seems like it's gonna only gonna decrease the life that we have in the soil to live off mm-hmm. yeah 100% because like this plant based initiative people are saying oh it's healthier for you it's healthier for you but is it really healthier for you and is it really healthier for an environment because there's a giant push for an environment but there's like a consensus of we should only be doing this to save the environment only this is gonna save the environment and, it, and it's just like hey let's make sure that this because there's a push that hey if you go plant based if you eat more plants you're doing environment uh, an actual benefit but it's just like all oh, he said she said kind of thing because there isn't uh, there isn't like hardcore facts that say that hey if you switch from animals to plants you're going to make a less carbon footprint you could say there's no it's not definitive the the planet's ecosystem is changing all the time it's weather is changing all, all the time um, glo- global warming is changing all the time like all that global stuff happens all the time so it's just like it's hard to say that hey if we if we turn plant-based we're going to make an impact because we're most likely not yeah, we think that we're creating an impact mm-hmm. by removing us from eating animals, which reduces methane gases, which helps the environment. But what if you're ruining the soil more from plant-based diets and in return is just causing more problems? It's just things you don't you know, talk, uh, think about. Even mm-hmm. listen to this episode. When was the last time you thought about soil health and how important it is and detrimental to our lives that we are the one with soil? Mm-hmm. It's almost like water. Like you take water for granted because it's always available, but it's just like you never really take time to think about how much water actually is there left. Because you don't know. Because there's every time you go to Walmart, you go to the grocery store, Ralph's or, or whatever. There's there's always there's always water there. There was never ever a shortage of water that I've experienced. Maybe other countries have, but I have no idea how that feels like. And imagine like if we take it for granted to the point where hey, water is actually a a scarce resource now. That'd be wild to think about. Yeah, it's very um apocalyptic mm-hmm. to see what was what would happen yeah so if you want to break down the soil profile 
scientists use the word horizons for this, aka layers. So there's two main layers of soil, topsoil and subsoil. So if you want to think about the first horizon, which is A, that is the hummus-rich topsoil. This is nutrient organic matter. Uh, think about earthworms. This is where all biological activity is happening, the plant roots, the insects, the breakdown of leaves, pines, everything that's turning back into earth into soil. So this is one of the most important horizons because this is where organic matter is and this is where plants actually come to into fruition. Your nutrition, if you think about it that way. Yes. We have the second horizon, B horizon. This is the clay-rich soil. This is often less fertile than topsoil. It's not really meant for uh, crops and all that, but it holds on to more, uh, more moisture. It's usually a lighter color. And I like to think about this from like the, the eastern side of things where they were like cutting out clay into like bricks and able to make a house out mm. of it because it's, uh, you're able to mold this clay, this soil into whatever you want because it's moisture thick. And so it's thickier. Yes. Uh, and it's a high in texture. And then you have the sea horizon, which is just underlying weathered rocks uh, from which both A and B horizons form. You also have an O horizon, which is mainly just plant litter and accumulated soil surfaces. So that's like you're like, we can actually see leaves on the ground. That's like that O horizon. Yeah. And this is where the way we're cropping and everything that we're doing, we're going to talk about more in the episode. We're ruining that A horizon. We're ruining the organic matter. If you don't have cows that naturally come and eat grass and poop on there and create this organic matter so it gets reabsorbed, nitrogen, all that fun stuff. Uh, we're ruining the cycle because we're, for one, I don't know if you want to talk about it now, like monocropping, right? Mm -hmm. We're just not doing, we're not farming the way it's meant to be. And it kind of makes me think about my grandpa when I talked to him about like soil and how farmland was in Poland. They, everything that was created from the earth could be fed back to the animals, fed back to the uh, ecosystem. For example, you create, um, you yield potatoes or whatever it is. You could grind it down, you could feed the animals with it, and then the maneuver that you get from cows, you could basically pop it into a tractor with that machine, I don't know what it's called, and just spray your damn soil all across, which is fertilizer, mm -hmm. natural fertilizer, not something that's, um, what is it called? Like a, you could say, like a supplement. Inorganic, yeah, mm -hmm. like inorganic nitrogen versus, hey, it's in the poop, we just have to use natural methods. Yeah. Yeah, so what's actually in soil that we actually use? Uh, so one of the biggest things, like Matt was talking about, is, is going to be the minerals. So about 45% of the volume of soil is minerals, such as magnesium, calcium, sulfur. Those are actually the, on the lower spectrum ones, but the more common one are going to be your phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen. And these minerals, like, it's crazy to think about because there's like <clears throat> these fundamental basic minerals we need to, to survive. You know, oxygen is one of them, hydrogen, nitrogen and so on and so forth. And like these are actually in, in the soil. So the plants need those to then create different, you could say nutrients and minerals that we need as people. So like you get like your carbs, your fiber, your proteins, these all stem from at some point uh, from the soil. And if you have poor soil with poor minerals, it's going to give poor nutrition to the plants that are growing from it. And then it's gonna give poor, poor nutrition to us as well. So here's the thing about too, like there's the inorganic or the, um the minerals like water and air that it's we think about air is just breathing but there's air in the soil that's entrapped that's helping the plants grow and the animals mm -hmm. those little insects to create the cycle of life right yeah like you mentioned the, like the oxygen stuff so like the gases are are in it like it crazy concept like you said to think about gases nitrogen gas isn't is in the soil oxygen gas is in the soil and, and you need all these things to to function uh, as well as like water if, if you think about water we need water as humans to survive majority made up of water, plants and animals also need water. So this is in soil. So the crazy thing about water is like, there's like a fine amount of water that you could have. It's about two to five, two to 50%. Because think about like a flood. If, if a flood happens, what happens to the soil? It gets destroyed basically because things can't survive only in, in water. That's why like the, you can say land masses and what constitutes like the bottom of the ocean, bottom of lakes, look, it looks a lot different than how life outside of water looks like because you know the the air around us and the land around us is not underwater so we require different nutrients for survival versus when something is in water it requires a different uh thing to survive with and these are actually crazy concepts that like i've never thought about in my life until i like, doing that doing this episode yeah did you already talk about minerals i did yeah okay so right so now if you want we're on organic organic materials so organic material constitutes about one to five percent of all soil 
and this is organic matter so think about dead plants and animals that lay in the earth that are rotting that decompose but they create essential elements for for plant growth um, and the capacity for us to uh to enhance the growth of potential soils mm -hmm. so yeah so organic material so it's like when you, when you think about it, like poop and stuff like that different kind of like you say like fertilizers uh, that's like the or organic matter um, what was interesting too is the microorganisms. So there's actually like we always kind of forget this. Is there's actually living things in the soil. There's not just like this patch of dirt, but there. When you think of like worms, uh, different bacteria, fungi, al algae, those all live as, as their home. And out of these microorganisms, you know, bigger or organisms get built off of. There's there's like tiny little bugs in the soil, you could say. And then guess what? There's other bugs that eat those bugs and so on and so forth. And then you have the food chain. So it's like, this is actually a home. It's like there's a, you know how people hunt for food out here, hunt for deer, hunt for elk and stuff like that. There's animals hunting other animals in the soil. And it's like its its own giant ecosystem within that soil. And that's why it's so messed up that we're using um, glycophosphates and all these other inorganic mm -hmm. fertilizers and spraying things with herbicides and pesticides because... If we're killing all this, these microorganisms, they're not allowed to decompose and break down organic material into hummus or humus, which then is able to feed plants. Mm -hmm. So it's like we, we're trying to yield so much for our earth, but we're cutting off detrimental parts of the, the cycle where it's only sustainable for so long. Mm -hmm. And now that we're talking about this episode because it seems like that the soil is in its uh, ending phases on earth. Yeah, it's crazy to think about, man. Wow, thing. Imagine if we had no soil. So the nutrition depletion in soil. So nearly 99% of the world's daily calorie intake can be traced back to, to soil. The plants and animals we eat require soil to grow. Soil is vital for human survival, yet modern farming and agriculture practices are quickly destroying it. Worldwide, one-third of Earth's soil is at least moderately degraded, and over half of the land used for agriculture has some level of degradation. So 50% has been basically damaged already by, by human consumption. And it's like crazy because I was doing some research about like, hey, is like, is there actually ways to like test the soil and figure out if there's actually these um, these drops in nutrition? And there are actually scientists out there that are trying to test the earth's soil. They keep track of like year to year soil yields, you could say, and the nutrition. And it shows that nitrogen stores have decreased by 42 percent, phosphorus by 27 percent, and sulfur by 33 percent. Even it's crazy to think about the declining soil fertility. So in the in the study too, in 2004, they took uh, 43 garden crops and they were analyzed from the 1950s to 1999. And it showed a drop in calcium, phosphorus, iron, riboflavin, vitamin C, ranging anywhere from 6 to 38% yeah. drop. Isn't that crazy? And those are the minerals that are mostly fortified in our cereals and et cetera. Yeah, mind-blowing. Up to 39, 39, 38% of some of these these nutrients have dropped that's crazy. It's almost half so it's like instead of eating uh, you could say you know one bowl of like this uh this this vegetable you now have to eat a bowl and a third you gotta eat you three know? bananas nowadays not one yeah that's what i'm saying it's, it's, it's crazy but it's just like something to, to, to keep in mind because we see this like like the issue isn't the amount of food it's the quality of the food right that's why we have an obesity pandemic going on because how is it possible that people are able to grow bigger and bigger, but yet become less healthy over time? And our body's starving for nutrition. Yeah, which is mind-blowing. And you, that has to stem down to, at, at some point, is the soil. Because obviously, if the soil isn't producing as effective fuel for us, that's what we should be fixing. Not, now, let's say, you know, um, not fixing, like, the carbon emissions. Because, yeah, carbon emissions are a problem for, like, vehicles or, or whatever, thing, things like that. But maybe we should first look at the soil because if we run out of food, we're a lot likely to survive if there's food versus if there isn't cars. Like, what would you choose? Would you choose a, choose a life where you're struggling for food or are you struggling to get to work? Right. Of course, food is more important. Right. Isn't that crazy? And so it's like we kind of um, neglect that because like this soil stuff, I don't hear any climate activists talk about soil. I haven't heard, heard it until Sadhguru said. I know I read up a little bit about the soil. I want to say like, I don't know, like eight years ago when I read one of his books or something I read. Because I, I used to follow Sadhguru like, like back in the day. Uh, when I first used to meditate and, and stuff like that and do yoga in my early phase. But then I lost track of it. But he did mention some about soil back then. So it's like this guy's been doing it for a minute. Yeah, even looking at corn. So the protein content of corn depleted 30 to 50%. And this is from 1920, 2001. So now there's more starch content in corn. Mm. Wild to think about. Yeah. So 
more starches equals more risks of uh, diabetes. Right. Yeah, the most processed things I tell you guys all the time, like the most processed foods you're ever going to eat in your life is going to be wheat, corn, and soy. Because we've been making those for such a long time. And you think about it, those are like the three main staples. So if you think of ancient Egypt, what, what do they have on higher hieroglyphics? They don't have like b- banana trees. They have like corn fields, wheat fields, right? Because we've been doing it for such a long time. And these are like, you think about it, the most genetically modified uh, foods you could eat because corn, soy, and wheat are most in everything that, that we consume. And you just talked about it, that, that it has increased in starch. Yes. So less nutrient content, more starch. So more, more fillers, less minerals and vitamins. Mind-blowing, right? So what is actually contributing to this soil erosion and this loss of soil? Just like we mentioned in the episode where agriculture is destroying soil 100 to 1,000 times the rate of which it can be deplenished. And this is where the statistics came from the United Nations that, hey, we have just 60 years. So one of the main factors is monocropping, monoculture. And this is the farming industry creating one crop and continuously yielding the same crop over and over again which depletes soil nutrition, uh, loses soil carbons, and leads to soil erosion. Um, I, and we have to switch this around. We have to introduce different crops in these different farms or introduce, I think they're mentioning, like, for example, growing some kidney uh, beans, right, where the beans, if they um, are kind of like put back into the soil, uh, back soil bacteria is able to convert it into nitrogen and that would stop us from using synthetic nitrogen fertilizers. But instead, that takes a lot of time, right? Why would you have to, for one year, not grow corn on that crop instead of different uh, d- different crops so it replenishes the soil? So instead, what do we do? We use uh, nitrogen-based fertilizers, which is inorganic, to sugarcoat, put a Band-Aid on the problem, which is, hey, we're losing organic matter. Mm, yeah, like you said, man, even for a monocropping stems the synthetic fertilizers, so it's been crazy to think about because nitrogen-based fertilizer production has increased by 9.5 uh, f- times since 1960s, 60s, and it's actually a very detrimental process when we make actually these nitrogen-based fertilizer because if you think about how much we're using it and the benefits of its use versus the amount of energy it, it costs and, and needs to be consumed to produce nitrogen-based fertilizers, it's not only the most effective thing we could be doing. And the thing is that, like, so do you think about these fertilizers as like, a, as like a pharmaceutical for plants. So let's just say I give you potassium, 20 mil equivalents. You'll take that 20 mil equivalents, but you're not going to absorb that full 20 mil equivalents, right? Because some of that stuff gets broken down in your GI tract and you might get half of that or whatever. Yep. So same way these synthetic fertilizers are that, yeah, you give them this nitrogen, but then the soil only consumes half of it. And then the other half just, just stays there in the soil. And then some of that stuff runs off into waters because not every soil needs like a high component of nitrogen. So if you're just putting nitrogen everywhere in general just to have it just, just in case, well, guess what? The extra nitrogen that's not being absorbed is getting spilled over to other soils that don't need a lot of nitrogen and you're damaging that. And it's going to damage on what crops grow there. Because for example, I'm not a, I'm not a farmer, so I don't know what crops need, need nitrogen the most. But I would give you an example, just to throw it out there. So imagine if corn needs a lot of nitrogen, but wheat needs low nitrogen. And you have both those fields next to each other. And then you you spray some nitrogen on that corn that needs nitrogen. It's not absorbing all of it. It's only absorbing half of it. Then the wind comes or whatever happens, uh, natural things move this nitrogen-rich compounds to this wheat field now. And that wheat field needs a low nitrogen environment. And now it has a high nitrogen volume, so it's damaging it. And that's why you're having this issue with these lack of nutrients because you're not allowing the wheat to grow in its optimum field. And plus, it's a it's like fertilizer. So when you think of natural fertilizer, like let's just say uh, cow dung, you don't just have nitrogen in cow poop, right? You have other things. So it's just like you're not just putting one supplement. It's like a multivitamin almost. Like cow poop is like a multivitamin versus a single vitamin that, that you're given of just nitrogen. What's going to be better? Probably the multivitamin for the for the for the the um the crops. Yeah. But even though you shouldn't be doing any kind of kind of like synthetic stuff, this is just for like an example. Another way for soil to be eroded and it's being hurt is tillage based farming. So the thing about this is a crop gets yield, farmers drive their tractors down and they try to mix this topsoil into removing crop residuals. They try to flatten the ground and they try to mix up this topsoil. And 93% of farmers worldwide are using tillage uh, farming based techniques, but it turns out that it's actually reducing microbial populations in the soil and it's actually releasing a lot more greenhouse gases. Mm. Um, 
went on a YouTube channel about this and there's like farmers that are promoting different techniques of trying to prevent tillage based farming and they're trying to do things like uh, put re residuals back onto the, the, the land so water goes down there and it protects the soil from eroding or from fl uh, just flying away when it comes to the wind. So interesting. So it's more like a farming technique then, yeah? There's a technique that we're using for farming. That's the soil. Yeah, that's everything, man. Another one here is herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. So same same concept. Like <clears throat> there's, like I mentioned before, there's like a whole ecosystem there. And I know some bugs might be detrimental to, to like blooming flowers or a certain crops. And people spray pesticides because an overabundance of these of these bugs is an issue it, it destroys things and it makes the food nutrient dense but we're overdoing it you know there's other ways to treat it you know more of like a, like a natural way i'm not sure if, if it's more cost effective but in the long run if you're just sacrificing the cost if you're willing to just save money and not care about the long long term thing it's gonna give you a, a, a an l at the end because let's just say for example um you're a farmer and you're and you're using pesticides on your wheat field because it gives you a you get more wheat yeah, you might get wheat over time, but then guess what? Now that wheat's using up more nutrition and using pesticides, which is going into the soil, which is changing up the soil environment, that it's going to change the nutrient content of that soil over time because you keep adding pesticides, herbicides, and, and other things. So you're slowly degrading the soil because of the things that you're adding because you want more food now. Yeah, not to mention, we don't know what these chemicals are doing to our bodies when Long we're consuming right. them, allergies... Uh, everything else like the whole case with roundup how mm -hmm. they finally got caught and it was causing cancer to some person else spraying it and microplastics that we talked about and now they're coming out on the news that they're shown to be toxic like it's crazy you just you just don't know because these are still fairly new things and remember like you're changing the environment imagine if like somebody kept spraying you with something even if they kept spraying with you with water it would probably change you in some kind of way yeah it's very hard because we live these busy lives we're always on the go and we just need food in our fridge, just stocked once a week. We just need to buy something, and it just keeps us, just keeps us going, right? How much food goes bad? To be honest, cog cog on the wheel, man. Mm -hmm. So we just need to take time to think about soil, maybe how we could help the environment, or even start a small little garden in your own life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing I'm excited about going back home to Chicago. Is I want to actually, I learn from my parents how they take time to what they do to the soil, how they grow it, like all that stuff. Like that's such a lost trait that's not talked about because we're just so busy with things. Yeah. Another one that erodes the soil is mismanaged grazing. So if cows enter the fields and they graze on the crops, that's okay. That's part of the ecosystem. But what happens in our Western society and worldwide is the cows and other uh, animals they just graze in one specific area and over time it actually ruins the soil and it lo uh, lowers the soil carbon reserves which uh, prevents plants from properly growing and like it's almost like in your perfect unity between like growing crops and letting animals graze you shouldn't be doing the same thing over and over again right it's almost like monocropping in, in a sense which makes sense like if you think about it in like the cycle of life you could say like if you think of a field you think of a field that gets used one time to grow a crop gets turned around, is blank for a little bit, it gets turned around again, maybe animals get to eat off of it, then it gets turned around again, then, then it becomes like a field for crops. Like a nice, like, when I think of like a cycle that I think a land would be happy with, I would think of that, like getting, everyone gets a turn on that land, a human, an animal, uh, nothing, things like that, right? And this is why it comes down to humans that are causing this problem because there is equilibrium. And if you have equilibrium, everything is fine. But we always try to yield the more most harvest. And humans are selfish creatures sometimes. And greed and profit takes over and all those other things, which leads you to yielding more crop, creating more money. But we're ruining the ecosystem, the land that we need. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's affecting everything. If we have this depletion in soil, it's going to affect the mind, body, and spirit in some way. Mm -hmm. It's going to make us feel sick. It's going to make us feel unhealthy. And there's only so much we can do because we're stuck in most urban settings where we don't know where this stuff grows. We just get it from the market. Mm -hmm. So how can we help the the world? And and I wish we had more time and uh, research how we actually can help this this soil phenomenon and preventing the the breakdown of soil. Like what can we do as humans in our day to day life to help this? I mean, one I would think of probably not throwing food away or helping with recycling, uh, trying to maybe. If you have a backyard, try your own gardening and uh, 
reusing, I don't know, just growing your own crops so you're not dependent so much. Mm -hmm. Or if you know which crops are being monocropped, opt out and buying those crops or purchase crops that are in season, which are actually more beneficial to the earth versus trying to get crops that are 24 seven in our stores that are actually unhealthy because of we try to uh, force those um, fruits and vegetables from being created. Yeah, it's hard to kind of like pinpoint where our food comes from if you think about it. You, we, we rely on like the USDA approved stuff, like USDA choice or whatever, like these these labels. And we're supposed to believe that this food comes from like a, like a good place, right? Because it's hard to pick healthy food and figure out what, you're, what you should eat and what you shouldn't because you, you don't know the cycle of how that piece of meat got to the, to the store or how that cucumber got to the store or how those bananas got to the store. We, we don't know. Like we have no idea just because it says like USD approved or whatever or has this, this nice label on it doesn't mean that like it's from an actual honest place because they could they could all be lying to you if you think about it because there is no uh like record you could say where hey you know this pineapple came from here and this pineapple lived this it's pineapple life in like a good environment right like you don't know that and i think that's where it becomes difficult because we gotta yeah because we gotta find like a unity between like the human body and and soil because like you mentioned in the beginning of of the episode it's just like uh, we come from ashes and we re- return to ashes. So it's like you said, the whole the whole soil thing. It's just the f- the more we deplete the soil, we're only depleting ourselves. We might not feel it directly, but the crazy thing about it is like the world that we live leave is the world that we give to our future humans, future kids, future uh, whoever comes into our lives or whoever stems out from us. Like it's a, it's a crazy thing because what you take for granted right now, someone will not want to have later on. It's a mind blowing thing that it could be soil because we're overusing it. Yeah, I'm also thinking about how. Like I, about? like I don't think that the answer is to go back to like the stone ages and drop all this technology and just live off a of farm. I don't think that's the answer. We we should be the one with technology and everything. But I think we need to take more time to uh, care about the earth, and we're too busy climbing the corporate ladders and just being the cog on the machine, and we're just trusting our higher ups government officials yeah. that are there for we the people but clearly they're doing such a bad job with everything happening so it's like yeah like we just need to se- we just take a step back in a revolution like, bro yeah we gotta take a step back and realize that that these one option solutions you could say aren't like i'm gonna bring it back to like the whole plant-based thing like if you go if you stick with plant-based eating and you're, and you're only vegan is that not like mono is that not like monocropping within itself if you're only limiting yourself to just eating these foods, aren't you technically monocropping? Because they're not gonna have any, anything else. You're monocropping your life. So this idea of, hey, we all have to eat this one certain diet, it's very flawed. And it's like people get sucked into like this, this agenda you, you could say of, hey, this is gonna it's help. Like a religion. Yeah, and like you get sucked into it and, all, and everybody else around you is also reinforcing you that. So you forget to take a step back because if, if you're saying one thing and everybody around you is saying yes, 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 you're like, damn, I must be right if everyone's saying yes, 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 yes. But then you get stuck in there. And you when you take a step back, you're like, hey, this kind of sounds like exactly what I'm what I'm trying to f- fight against. Because the whole vegan movement, this whole only plant-based, only eat, eat plants, that just straight up sounds like monocropping. And, and if it sounds like monocropping, isn't that the one thing that we should be avoiding to like prevent damage onto agriculture and onto ourselves, right? right. People just don't have the data to uh, create that perspective and they're yeah. very just one-sided to it. Like, hey, I'm, cows are creating uh, greenhouse gases, therefore I'm going to be vegan. That's going to prevent from yeah, or, the, or the the cruelty from being ruined yeah. or, or cruelty, just like you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, animal cruelty. Like, no, no. Have you ever seen like Nature's Metal on Instagram? Like, if you think well, how we're slaughtering these animals is cruel, like check out how they get slaughtered in nature, man. And it's not, it's not like a cow. It's like a, a bear on like... I'm like a beaver, do I think it rips, rips Bro, it apart? I was watching that yesterday and there was like two pandas on a tree and there was like four or five tigers just like jumping up and trying to snag them down that tree. Yeah. If that panda fell to the water, those six tigers are not going to pet it. Mm-mm, mm-mm. They're exactly. hungry. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's just like, and, and realize that like all like animals have feelings and things like that. Like, not that like I don't care about animals like I love dogs I love pets but like realize that these animals brains you could say they don't comprehend as much as we comprehend so like their lives are different they have a different purpose on this earth and that purpose Excuse bless me. you and that purpose is to kind of live their life and some of its purpose is to uh, get eaten I mean it, it is what it is same way some of us die young right so we just fucking die young we the people die in their 20s 
you know, there's kids that get, get cancer and guess what? Like life moves on. Same with animals. What are you going to protect all animals and you're going to value an animal's life over a person's life? Like let's, 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 let's keep it real guys. Like we're above, the, we're on top of the food chain for a reason. Like we were, you could say made by God this way or genetically created this way. It, let bygones be bygones, but it's like a reason why we're here and there's a reason why we're able to do these things and eat certain things is because we were meant to do these things. So yeah. it's a crazy concept. They wanted to like remove some part of the food chain. Yeah. Bunch of goofies out there. Mm, that yeah. wokeism culture bullshit. Yeah. Of course, we sh- we should entirely as humans eat more plants for sure. I- I'm guilty of that too. I should definitely eat more, eat more plants and you, you could say vegetables and everything like that. We should all do that. But only eating that? No, because we're going to be missing out a good portion of our life. Right. It's just like balance with anything. Mm. And there's balance to soil. There's balance to consuming tr- too much drugs. That could be anything. Caffeine insert and just yeah it's all about living in harmony with it mm-hmm. not uh, not lust and greed where you're creating things and consuming them in access right and then we're not going to be able to be as creative as, as people the longer this this takes time because like the um the hierarchy of needs right you got to have certain things before you achieve others so imagine where a soil becomes so depleted where you're never where your body's never nutritiously satisfied like you're eating but soil is degraded to the point that you're always still missing something. You're not going to be able to come up, come up with the same ideas as, as you would because you're depleted of some kind of nutrient. Like you're not able to work in your, in your optimal environment because you don't have the food that allows you to work in the environment, environment or element. And then over time, you're going to see probably a decreased size of humans because less nutrition means you're not going to be able to grow as much. Probably uh, smaller brain sizes and just smaller people in general, if you think about it, if we keep depleting our, our soil, it's going to lead to smaller, smaller people over time. And if you think about it, it does kind of make sense because if you think of like the Neanderthals, right? At some point, we believe that there was like these giant monkey looking humans, right? They were huge. Maybe they were that big because the, the nutrition or diet allowed them to be that big. But then when you look at like the Egyptians, for example, those kind of people, they were different in size, right? They weren't always the biggest. They were kind of smaller, right? So it's just like depending on the take and maybe that has an influence of what part of the world those people existed in because maybe certain parts of the world where Neanderthals flourished, there was a high nutrition dense versus like the desert where I'm guessing Gibson were less nutrition which led to smaller people, right? Yeah. Not to go down like a giant rabbit hole here. Things to think about, guys. Mm-hmm. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys find value in things that we talk about or found value, please share with the loved ones. Hit the five stars. This is how we grow. This is how we get motivated to keep on doing what we're doing. See you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Peace out.